about uh, four years ago, I had the privilege uh, to meet uh, with President Grimson. Uh, he was introduced to me by Alice Rogoff, who was sitting here with him. And uh, I became much more familiar with what was going on in the Arctic. Uh, during the course of the ensuing years, as I looked at more and more investment opportunities in the Arctic, uh, <clears throat> uh, I was actually contacted by the World Economic Forum uh, to explore how to increase the amount of capital available uh, to invest in uh, projects throughout the Arctic. As a result of this work, uh, we have advanced a three-step uh, program uh, which involves uh, uh, building a, a pathway for responsible and sustainable development in the Arctic. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, <clears throat> in order to benefit from the immense economic opportunities, the citizens of the world have a responsibility to become wise stewards, stewards of its sustainable development. The Arctic, as you can see, has many opportunities, uh, virtually limitless. Uh, while we often think of energy uh, extraction and mining, uh, shipping, as we've heard, uh, is an important component, and especially as the retreating sea ice uh, enables more and more passage uh, through uh, the Arctic uh, gateways, uh, there will be more and more need for infrastructure development in the Arctic. Uh, there are other things like ocean resources, uh, fisheries, uh, biomarine technology, uh, things which people do not <clears throat> readily think of as being Arctic in nature, but yet is one of the most important food sources for the world. And then environmental protection. The Arctic is, is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world and has profound uh, effects and impacts on the rest of the world. Uh, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to speak with the CEO of the World Wildlife Fund, uh, who described to me the Arctic as a giant bank shot. And for those who aren't familiar with that phrase, if you play billiards or pool, uh, you will know that it, from time to time you will shoot the ball at the side of the table and then it will come back and hit another ball. Uh, the Arctic is feeling the effects of all the the global changes which are occurring outside of the Arctic, uh, which is impacting it uh, environmentally uh, and uh, very dramatically. And as a result of that, what is happening in the Arctic is coming back at the rest of the world. For instance, if the Arctic, <clears throat> if Arctic warming were to continue to the point that we melted all of the glaciers in Greenland, then we would have seawater around the world rise by at least six feet. So the consequences are very profound of what's going on there, and certainly in a place like Singapore, a very important place to be focused. In the work that, the opportunity I've had to work with the World Economic Forum, uh, I was asked to join the Global Agenda Council on the Arctic, uh, <clears throat> and uh, one of my co-members is here today, uh, Mead Treadwell, the uh, former Lieutenant Governor of Alaska. Uh, and <clears throat> it is reasonable to expect that a purely governmental solution is not possible to the needs of the Arctic. So I'd like to tell you today more about a private sector initiative. You can see here that the World Economic Forum has gathered a large and diverse group of organizations uh, together on a solution for Arctic development needs. <clears throat> and as you scan the list, you can see names of all sorts of organizations from around the world where we have delegates who are attending uh, the, glo uh, the Global Agenda Council on the Arctic. <clears throat> the approach that we are going to outline will be in three steps. The first step <clears throat> is the introduction of the Arctic Investment Protocol. It would be unreasonable to rush into development without making sure that there are certain responsible and accountable standards for development uh, within the Arctic. This code of conduct <clears throat> is responsible to help ensure private sector organizations do the right things for the right reasons. It is intended to be measurable, 
as a series of goals against which we can be a, companies may be evaluated. It is intended to hold companies accountable to a pragmatic set of standards and to assure that, the, that reasonable development occurs. So in order to establish this protocol, we have established three objectives which the protocol will address. The first is to build resilient societies through economic development. Uh, the goal here is to create enduring jobs and promote capacity building and encourage lo local ownership of assets in the Arctic. It is also to promote the UN Sustainable Development Goals and to create better living standards through infrastructure investment. And as you can see by the slide, there is a very strong correlation between the quality and standard of living in any region of the world uh, based upon how much infrastructure is in place. Two, <clears throat> it is designed to respect and collaborate with indigenous and local communities. The Arctic people must be engaged in an inclusive dialogue on the practical standards from ec for economic growth. Development should not be imposed by those from afar. Through active collaboration, we can work to reduce the economic disparities that we see in so many Arctic regions. Objective three, protect and preserve the complex and diverse environment of the Arctic. The Arctic environment is changing rapidly. <clears throat> As such, investment without environmental concern will not succeed. We must not follow the historical patterns of development which have left deep and lasting scars on local ecology. Objective four, a commitment to responsible and accountable business practices. It goes without saying that all business must be conducted in a fair, legal, and transparent manner, but it should go beyond this. And the protocol is designed to, to raise minimum standards and to set a higher bar for economic development in the Arctic. The Arctic Investment Protocol is built upon sound principles, which include the International Finance Corporation performance standards on environmental and social sustainability, the UN principles for responsible investment, and the World Bank's environmental health and safety guidelines. Objective five, to consult and integrate science with traditional ecological knowledge. Modern science can help us understand the future of the Arctic region. Additionally, traditional knowledge provides us an understanding of the past and, the, and how man has interacted in the Arctic environment. We need to rely on science and traditional knowledge to navigate <coughs> the rapidly changing environment. It is bad business to do otherwise. Objective six, global cooperation and best practices. The parties that you see here are all individual companies or nations with which we have had discussions. Uh, and it should not be assumed that they are endorsing the protocol, but they are engaged in discussion around the protocol. The scale of both the opportunities and the challenges here are enormous. Only with a large and diverse group of stakeholders can we hope to set a higher bar for the Arctic region. Step two, the Arctic infrastructure inventory. The second step sounds much less lofty than the first, but it is an extremely important and practical step for us to advance economic development in the Arctic. <clears throat> Under the Arctic, infrastructure inventory. We will develop an authoritative and exhaustive database of infrastructure uh, for needs in the Arctic. At present, there is no one compendium of what needs to be built or created in the Arctic. The goal here is to collect investment opportunities and to make them op available on an open source database, which will allow private sector and public sector investors to access a list of opportunities in which they may seek to invest. Opportunities which just exist today, and I, I often hear statements from people, they say, well, Scott, <clears throat> the changing environment of the Arctic uh, is certainly going to have uh, big consequences over the third, next 30 to 50 years, 
But what is there to do today? Well, for instance, as you have heard already, there's the Bremen Ports project in Iceland. There is also, at a much low, lower level, a floating port in Norway. The Re Arctic Railway <clears throat> is a project that is currently being reviewed to build a railway through Finland to Kirkenes, which is the port in, in the, the most northern port uh, in Norway. Uh, the Lava Express. The Lava Express is a project which is designed to build a light rail service from the uh, Reykjavik airport uh, to the center of the city. As tourism in Iceland continues to expand dramatically by 30% per year. The Alaska LNG project. This is a huge project. It is proposed to be an inf to require an infrastructure investment of 45 to 65 billion dollars. There will be many other projects around this. So being aware of what's going on with the LNG project, whether there be private investment or not, is an important opportunity for investors in the Arctic. The Sasitna Watana hydroelectric project. Uh, this project is here and now and very real. And we are currently looking at making an investment in this project uh, as part of Guggenheim's uh, current investor groups. The HS Orca project. This is a geothermal power plant located in Iceland. The project has a strategic location as a highly efficient operating facility with offtake agreements through 2026. Silicor Materials. This is a company which basically provides uh, uh, silicon uh, uh, material for the use in solar panels. It is amazing to believe that people who are sitting in Singapore might look at the Arctic and realize that it is an important piece of the supply chain in terms of solar energy. Other opportunities in the Arctic, in science and innovation, bio prospecting, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, food, biofuel, aquaculture, cold tech, data centers, coal, cold climate testing, construction and building materials, Ge uh, renewable energy, geothermal, wind, hydro, solar, tidal, space and monitoring, satellite technologies, unmanned aerial vehicles, unmanned underwater vehicles. When I traveled through the Arctic, <coughs> I have seen you know, many opportunities. Uh, most people would assume that the things that I see are things like port projects or, or mines or, or energy extraction. But some of the most interesting projects that I've seen relate to the biosciences. At the University of Tromso in Norway, they have isolated a molecule from an algae which only grows in the Arctic, which can be used in the treatment of cancer. So when we think about the Arctic, we must rethink the, our perceptions. As I jokingly say, I, I recently had an American who said, oh, so you're going to the Arctic again. I said, yes. They said, so when you've been there, have you seen the polar bears and the penguins? And uh, my response was, well, there are no penguins in the Arctic. And their response was, oh, you mean they're extinct already? Um, so. Uh, there, there is a great mythology around the Arctic. Uh, and the, the, the misunderstandings about the Arctic as just a place to go and extract natural resources uh, is, is very misleading. And so that is one of the reasons that we are putting so much energy and effort into the development of the Arctic in, uh, investment inventory. The third step is to provide for the necessary financing resources to implement the projects and programs for sound and responsible development in the Arctic. That is the Arctic Permanent Investment Vehicle. We have had early discussions with major investors throughout the world to finance a permanent investment vehicle which can be used for the purpose of financing projects throughout the Arctic. Our goal will be to create a new vehicle which can provide funds for projects and initiatives that will positively impact Arctic economic development. As you can see here, 
the amount of capital and leverage using a very simple model that is commonly used by development banks around the world would provide significant capital for Arctic development. If you remember on the infrastructure slide that we, we looked at a minute ago, uh, our best estimate today, and it is very difficult to get a good estimate, but our best estimate is that there is a trillion dollars of infrastructure and investment to be done in the Arctic. That estimate, by all calculations, is probably too low. <clears throat> when you look at the Arctic, let me help you put it in perspective. It is now possible, because of the retreating sea ice, to ship through, for ships to pass through the northeast and northwest passages four months of the year. It is estimated that within 10 years, it is likely that those passages will be open all year long. To give you a scale of the impact of how big this is for global shipping, a ship going from Korea through the Panama Canal to the port of Newark in New York City travels 13,000 kilometers. If that same ship were to use the Northwest Passage, there would be 5,000 kilometers. It would reduce the shipping distance by more than half. At the rate of the receding sea ice in, in the polar region, uh, there will be no ice on the North Pole by the year 2050. The risk to the estimates so far have been that all the calculations which science has made is that the, the rate of change is actually faster than the projections. Uh, it, is, it is actually happening at a rate of almost 200% faster than is currently projected. So even if we had stood here five years ago and talked about the future, the world we would have thought five years away uh, has turned out to be an optimistic view. Uh, things are changing quickly. I recently had the privilege to have dinner uh, with Alice Rogoff and President Obama. And uh, President Obama, I think, keenly had a, a great insight, which I agree with, and that is that we as humans take great pride in our ability to innovate around change. However, there is a chance here that change is happening so much faster than we think that we may not innovate quickly enough. That is why it is important that we now put in place a, 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 a way for us to make investment in the Arctic. During a visit to the Hoover Institution uh, <clears throat> a year or so ago where I was asked to, to invited to discuss the Arctic along with my colleague, Mead Treadwell, um, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to speak with the former U.S. Secretary of State, George Shultz. Uh, he was Secretary of State under Ronald Reagan. Secretary Shultz said to me, Scott, can you imagine that you got up this morning and you picked up your newspaper, and the headline on the top of it said, the world has discovered a new ocean. Indeed, the world has discovered a new ocean. In the words of Secretary Schultz, this is the most significant event in the history of the world in 12,000 years, when the Ice Age first began to end. So the Arctic, for us, represents a a huge challenge and a huge opportunity. But to sum it up most accurately, from an investment standpoint, the Arctic region is the fastest growing economic region of the world. When you look at any other region in the world, whether it be Africa or other places which are noted for their rapid growth, the average economic annual rate of growth in the Arctic region is the highest in the world relative to any country or any continent. So for investors, there is an opportunity here to take advantage of the impact of climate change, but there is probably more importantly a responsibility. And that is why we are focused on the Arctic Investment Protocol, which we, we plan to announce in Davos in January. That protocol calls us to behave responsibly 
and to do that which is in the best interest of all the stakeholders of the Arctic. And the Arctic belongs to all of us. There are six million people who live in the Arctic. However, the impact of what is going on there will affect us all. In that way, the Arctic it belongs to all of us. And we must all take this opportunity to begin to take responsibility to make sure that the, the events in the Arctic are dealt with in a responsible way uh, for all of mankind. Thank you very much.